It was playful and it was camp and it was just over the top with Ziggy. But as drugs started to take a, 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 a more severe hold on my life, the, 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 the ability within your conscious mind to actually uh, deliver yourself into two separate parts disappears and the lines blur and it's only this one formless mutant that's left, left behind. So it gets quite messy in there. It gets very messy in there. And uh, by the mid-70s, I was so, uh, so out of my gourd that really it was very impossible. It was all nigh on impossible for me to function in, in any rational way. So I didn't know I was playing characters by that time. <laughs> Um, best haircut? I don't know. I, uh, maybe late 80s, I had a very, very, very short haircut when I was living in Berlin. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Haben Sie da Marlboro? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cigarette. <laughs> Cigaretten. Um, and uh, are we on speed? Is this speed? Is this speed? speed or coke? <laughs> I can't tell. I don't know, but it's going. <laughs> Well, both Iggy and I felt there might be time to clean up, so we, we were very smart about it. We went straight out of L.A. to the heroin capital of Europe, Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> that was the smartest move we made. Um, but you know something? We were totally unaware. We had no oh, idea. Yeah, right. We had yeah, no right. I promise you, we had no idea. It just seemed such a romantically... Uh, historically interesting place, the Christopher Isherwood thing, and, uh, and the, it being the gateway to Europe with all the art forms going in and out there, and Dada being there. It just seemed like, you know, and, you know, the bar of mine off and all that. There was something kind of, we felt conflict and tension in the air. God, if we can't write in this place, we can't write anywhere, you know. And, and, we're, and we're straightened up as well. <laughs> Which to... Uh, uh, a, le a greater extent we did. Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, it was sort of clean-up time. Uh, it was uh, three years of uh, going in and out of Berlin. I can't say that we lived there consistently all the time because we were still still touring, you know, and all that as well. Uh, so we keep going back to the States and back to England and whatever. But um, uh, I think uh, one thing, we got it, it was actually shaking off the Hollywood thing, the L.A. thing, which, uh, you know, it's sort of, you're served hand and foot there, and, and it's so easy to slip, especially when you're stoned, so easy to slip into that dependence on everybody around you. And where we chose to live in Berlin, actually, not quite choice, because uh, we were both uh, skint, but both really broken at the time. was uh, uh, an average working-class area, a um, lot of Turkish uh, around. It was a Turkish neighbourhood. And it was pretty much, you know, doing your own shopping. I know these sound like it's tragically, you know, think, yeah. oh, poor boy. Yes, we're all crying. Yeah, I know. You. you phone up the shop, don't you? And sort of stuff gets sent round. Food and drugs. You know, it's, everything's a phone call away. But it was a, there was a kind of reality in that. And there's just the reality of trying to think without drugs as well. That was, uh, that was probably even harder. It's funny that I think the ones that had the more... The more mediocre, vacuous personalities in that period ended up fared far worse than the ones that really put themselves through the mill. And people like Bill Burrows, you can't, you can't meet a, a healthy, well, ostensibly healthier, you know, Kerouac who cleaned up and got all healthy, like he's dead. <laughs> I'm not suggesting for one small minute that you rush out and get your junkie kit together, you know. Not at all. It's just interesting that, that people who uh, make those explorations if they, if, they go, if they go through the cusp of those explorations, they do tend to come out the other side uh, in a way uh, um, better people for it, you know? So that's, that's a dangerous thing to say, but it's true in my case. I'm glad I did everything I did. I really am. I would not... I can't... Well, who might have recommend anything to anybody? But I certainly... It's uh, everybody's own private individual needs, you know? And uh, naturally, I would, uh, I would advise my son not even to think about it because I know the inherent dangers of doing it. Um, somehow or other, I went through a whole series of survivals and, and crawled out of it all. Uh, and having got away with it, I'm really glad that I did it. But it's like, 
If I said to my son, yeah, Joe, I think it's a great idea for you to get in the shuttle and be shot off of a thousand miles an hour to the moon, you know, what a great thing to be able to look back on. I don't want him to get in it in case it blows up, you know, <laughs> but I know what he means, like the journey is like, whoa, 